Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very interesting episode of CSK News. As always, all of today's stories will be time marked down below and thank you guys for all watching. Also make sure to leave a comment down below about the controversial stories today. The first one being about Virtus Pro. I know on my last episode I had a ton of you guys leaving comments down below about Virtus Pro. A lot of you guys are very strong Virtus Pro fans, so I'd love to see your guys' feedback on this first story and the updates on the controversial story involving Virtus Pro and Team Venators, another Polish team out there. This is actually all about the WESG event. For those of you guys who are not aware of the background of WESG, they host an event every year early on in January. This year it's actually be on January 3rd, a $1.5 million prize pool tournament larger than the major prize pool and on top of that it also is before the major and of course the main requirement of this is all the teams who will participate actually have the same country of origin or the same denomination meaning a lot of the teams out there who are actually very successful are the pro teams out there that already play with five players of the same country so we're just going to see teams like Astralis or the Polish team Virtus Pro was suspected to be one of the better teams out there and of course in this process they actually have to go through qualifiers just like the minor system out there and just like like the minor qualifiers, I'm sure many of you guys are aware we've had this same problem. We think in the future we have more evidence now for big tournaments like WSG and especially for minor qualifiers for the major, we need to have more LAN events or events that have less less best of ones. We're going to see a lot more upsets and a lot more opportunities for you know tinier teams to actually come through and that could be a good thing. I have my own personal opinion where I thought it was going to be a great thing to see in the minor qualifier and through WSG qualifiers some unknown teams break through but when it comes to actually seeing these guys on LAN, you're going to be very disappointed with many of these teams and Team Venator might have been one of those teams where it could have been cool to see them sneak through, but maybe it was just not meant to be. So elaboration, updates on this big WSG story, guys, and how this actual qualification does go through. For WSG qualifiers, there are individual country qualifiers. So we had the Polish qualifiers, Virtus Pro was in, and the top two Polish teams then go to the European finals, and the winner, the top four in European finals, actually go through the main WSG event. So that's how it goes for every single country. And for this particular instance, it was actually a Team Venators and Team AGO, the other Polish team, who actually managed to qualify at first through the Polish region until we found out one of the Venator's members actually had a separate Steam account with a VAC ban on it and here's where the hypocrisy lies. The problem with many people out there that are seeing with the situation is the fact that it was never confirmed that that Team Venator's team who actually played very well, they won all three of their best of ones. They beat Virtus Pro as well as Pride Gaming in best of threes. They beat Pride Gaming at least in a best of three and they went on to actually qualify before being DQ'd for this. Now the hypocrisy lies. I think Don puts it the best on Twitter by saying the fact is this. We saw a long time ago with the I by power situation, of course, slightly different because it was a throwing situation, a match fixing. It was not, it was not cheating or a vac ban involved, but still slightly similar because Swag or Braxton Pierce on that team was very, very young at the time, around 17 years of age. And his excuse, or many people who actually made the excuse for him, not necessarily him himself, people who defended him, said that he was too young. He was very influential, and so we should never hold it against him. We shouldn't, and that's why when the vac ban new rule was actually lifted this year, after two years of vac ban, you are now free to play in ESL events. People were like, okay, that makes sense. We're glad to have him back. But in this particular instance, and I think it was thanks to Nell as well, the guy on Team Venators who actually had a separate account, completely separate Steam account with a VAC ban on it, it was when he was 15 years of age younger than Brax, and of course many of us out there have probably cheated at some point in time in some video game out there without knowing we might be a pro player in the future. I know myself relating to this, of course, we have RuneScape Deadman mode now. It's kind of a professional RuneScape tournament held every once in a while. I've cheated before in RuneScape. I had a bot account once a long, long time ago when I was about 13 years old. I technically cheated in that game, and if I ever wanted to be a RuneScape pro player, if they had a pro scene like, like CSGO, I might not be able to play because I cheated when I was of an influential age. Just like this team Venators of a person obviously cheated once ago when he was actually 15 years old and it is now coming back to bite him in the butt. Other arguments out there saying because Virtus Pro had argued that it's so hard, that's why they were such a well-known team, that's why it was such a, an upright, an uproar, that's why this team was actually caught for having this. In other instances, if, you, if they didn't complain, this team might have actually gone through. I don't really agree with that argument. I think, of course, if there's a VAC ban player on that team, it needs to be looked into. But in this particular instance, what do you guys think about this? It was not confirmed. For all you Virtus Pro fans out there who commented on the last video, I saw tons of comments saying, oh, well, Virtus Pro was playing against a team who was cheating, so it's okay. You know, uh, I don't think that's necessarily the case. Actually, they did replay these matches, guys, and Virtus Pro did qualify alongside AGO. Virtus Pro narrowly beat out one of the better teams out there rising in the Polish scene. That was Pride Gaming. They beat them in a best of three narrowly. Uh, I think the last match actually went to 16-12 on the map three there. But I want to know what you guys think about this. Does it actually deserve to have Venators disqualified? I'm not really sure of the overall ruling. Should this actually be held against this guy? And that was in big news for our first CSK 
CSGO news story. Also on top of that though, uh, I'm talking about the growing CSGO scene out there. People thinking that CSGO is dying. The numbers out there right now do defute that argument as we actually had many tweets out there talking about this last week as the CSGO player base numbers have actually been growing ever since the introduction to the Chinese region. I'm sure you guys are well aware. We've talked about this plenty of times. Perfect World now operating all CSGO operations inside China and the player base numbers continue to rise over 12 million players monthly and we have now surpassed the Dota 2 players as well which is also a great crack into the Asian scene. Many of you guys know an Asian dominated team or Asian dominated uh, eSport out there is Dota 2 so that's a great sign. On top of that though we also have Ethan from H3H3 talking about CSGO and one of his podcasts with uh, Total Biscuit. So I'm going to show you guys that clip as well. CSGO is not dying, I guarantee it. We might not be growing as fast as we used to be, but we're still on the rise. The work. And remember it's tricky. When, remember when CSGO first came out, it was garbage, both mm. to play and to, to watch. Now it's so good to watch. Yeah. Like it's so I agree. crisp and clean. You can easily see. Anybody can see what's going on, and even if you don't understand CSGO. You know, yeah. guy caps yeah. four dudes in the head with a pistol. It's great. Yeah. It's impressive. obvious. Obviously impressive. I think that's a you know? great example. That's me, because you, Ethan, will play all these games, and I don't. So a lot of times I'll sit with him and I watch. Yeah. And I can tell you, some games are really fun to watch, even if I don't understand yep. the game. It's important that the skill is apparent yes. to, a, to a layman, right? right? It has to be yeah. readily apparent. And, and I, that's what's going to make them big. I Actually, now that you've said that, I think Counter-Strike is the only competitive game where you can, you can see the skill. So I don't know, it's just really cool to see other personalities out there, especially huge YouTube personalities talking about CSGO, and I definitely agree. What do you guys think about this? Of all the spectator sports out there, I think there's two that are on the top of my list. One of them is actually League of Legends Worlds during the summer. I love watching League of Legends. Other than that, I really don't watch them. And also CSGO Majors is definitely a spectator sport, especially when you can hear the crowd in the background. I definitely agree with Ethan and those guys on that opinion. CSGO is luckily one of the better spectator sports out there, and that's the one reason why I think that CSGO will outlast PUBG and other games games like it because it's not a spectator sport, it's not very fun to watch. Which brings us to our very next story guys, H1Z1 KOTK had a big a big invitational this past weekend, have you guys heard about this? Tons and tons, every YouTuber you would probably know about, and also Twitch streamer was there, a lot of CSGO pro players were there, like Shroud, like Hiko, I guess I should say ex CSGO pro players, like like Shroud, were all there, Dr. Disrespect, Summit 1G, Soda Poppin, the list goes on and on, this was one of the best events I have ever watched on Twitch, if you guys got a chance to see it, maybe I'll link some highlights down below for all of you, but why I'm actually bringing this up, why am I talking about H1Z1, is because our man Hiko actually placed third overall, and why I want to talk about this very shortly is because Hiko actually made $30,000, he placed third, bringing in $25,000, he also had the most kills of anyone at the event, bringing in an extra $5,000 for him, and why I'm bringing this up is because we now see CSGO pro players making more money not playing CSGO than they actually would if they are playing CSGO, obviously Hiko, a part of Team Rogue, struggling in ESL Pro League right now with Kading as their stand-in, or their, their newest member there, and he made $30,000 dollars in one weekend, I can almost guarantee you guys he will never make that kind of money again playing CSGO, but it's very, very cool to see a guy that I, I love to see play leaving CSGO, and they can dominate other esports very, very easily, so that was a very cool news, guys. Hiko is making big money not playing CSGO. And also, I really want to thank you guys who have actually clicked on the DMarket link down below. That's my new sponsor, actually the sponsor of this video and the last two videos. This is actually the last video for now that's actually sponsored by them. If you guys have not heard about this, I've talked a long, long time about it the last few videos. If you guys want to do me a favor and learn more about that, you click it down below. It is a new cryptocurrency launching sometime soon for the virtual marketplace, and I am so excited to see the future of this and other, other companies out there launching this. Of course, my sponsor, DMarket, was actually founded by a Navi founder. And on top of that, Skins.Cash, that owner is also tied to this company so I do believe it's gonna be successful in some way and it should only help us I really I don't care if you guys invest or not I would advise probably doing a lot of research extensively before investing in this new in this new any kind of Bitcoin out there any new Bitcoin or new cryptocurrency that is because a lot of them probably won't be near as good as Bitcoin or other coins out there but this could be a very big coin itself it could be compared to Litecoin or Dogecoin or maybe Ethereum and that kind of remarks it's for the virtual marketplace only so for all the esports out there all the video games who actually have uh, market transactions it could could, of course for all of us who don't even invest make it a lot easier for us to sell skins buy skins it should be cheaper as well and I cannot wait to see the future of this so please leave a comment down below what you guys think about that and thank you to all of you guys who actually reached out to me about this teaching me more things about cryptocurrencies I do appreciate that so DMarket is down below and huge thanks to them for actually sponsoring my last two videos I cannot thank them enough for all they did and thank you to you guys for actually watching these videos where I could actually attain that sponsor and so huge thank you guys now on to our last story and also a couple days ago we thought we had a very important post from snacks a part of Virtus Pro, of course, many struggles going on in that team. We thought with this post on screen for all of you, we had a big announcement coming from Virtus Pro. Then a few hours later, he did post this as well. An update, a slight delay to his big announcement, and his big announcement actually was indeed a troll. He posted this picture a few hours afterwards, and it does say translated attention. 
thank you for your attention or thank you for listening. So it was a troll, guys. There's no big announcement as of right now for Virtus Pro. We thought maybe an IGL change, maybe a roster move, but as of right now, it was a troll. As always, thank you guys for watching. I'm actually home on a Sunday recording these clips because I get a haircut tomorrow. And I get my haircut from the same guy back in my hometown. And if you guys can tell, uh, yeah, I really need a haircut. But if you guys could also tell, I'm just so much happier being here. I don't know if you guys could tell this video was maybe a bit better talking wise. Maybe I slowed down a bit for once, but I'm just so happy to be back at home. I don't know why making these videos in my in my dorm room, in my apartment room that's so cramped and so small. And I know my, my new roommate's actually right there listening when I record those videos. It just kind of puts a damper on my attitude. So if you guys could do me a favor and leave a comment down below or even leave a like on the video, I would greatly appreciate that. I wish I could make videos in an office space or my home more often. So hope you guys all enjoyed. I actually have an off week of school. I, I, I go to school, but a lot less homework, a lot less tests this week. So hopefully more episodes of CSK News and some more series may be dropping soon. My name is Jake Marmer. I like you. I will see y'all tomorrow or in a couple days. Remember, like you. Ah!